Hi everyone, I'm the founder and CEO of Think Film Impact Production and if you don't know what we do, we sit at the very powerful intersection of policy and film. As scientists, you must know a lot about policy because a lot of your research and work is driven towards providing evidence or insights to a lot of the changes uh, in, in political dynamics and also research to create legislation. And for us, working on impact is also working with scientists that can provide that knowledge and basis, the importance of that storytelling in the films we make to make sure that the campaigns we run are accurate, are powerful and are actually uh, sustainable. Um, I'm here today because I want to talk to you about a word that I kind of, I don't know if I actually created it or not, but I often refer to um, impact because it's been a bit diluted as actionism. Everybody's scared of activists and everybody is bored with facts. Now that's a very scary statement I'm making there right now, but we're in a world where those two things seem like radical spectrums. And so actionism feels like to take action feels less scary. And so Think Film really believes that by kind of running campaigns that are action orientated, which is very important in science, you need actions, you need investigations, you need all sorts of elements that create opportunities for solutions to, to, to make change happen. And so I'm hoping that your, what you see today in the way that we do impact with Think Film and the movies that we work on will drive you towards that actionism in the way you, you can tell uh, filmmakers about the stories that you are building in your work and your research so that they can have better stories or more accurate stories to tell. Moving, so what is our mission? Um, I've already told you we are at the intersection of film and policy. But for us, it's really about concrete socio-political decisions. And I'm going to give you examples of some of the films we've worked on and how we have achieved that. But without having a mission which is driven towards socio-political decisions, commitments, outcomes, and having facts and, and real understanding of the scientific basis of that, we cannot get those things, cannot achieve them, we cannot measure them, and we cannot see what change we really need. We cannot look at what needs to be changed and we cannot assess what, how we change it really. So you kind of, what is the importance of impact? You're going like, why do filmmakers really need to be involved in impact? And why does your community play such a role in that? Well, there are a few components here. Messaging. If you understand the very basis, the scientific, historical, factual basis of the issue you're putting out into the world as a filmmaker, you have the potential to lead the socio-political narrative. And I know what most of you are thinking. You're thinking, well, that sounds a little bit like propaganda. Well, yes, of course, some, some even scientists take sides when it comes to a theory or position they have on an issue. But really the job of the filmmaker is to take those multiple positions, multiple scientific basis for an issue, multiple socio-political basis on an issue and present it to the world in a way that is compelling. And if, you're, if you as a filmmaker are actually knowing every different type of argument and understanding that basis, then you're able to make a film where you're leading the story you want to tell. You're not being led by what others are just saying. You're actually driving a narrative as a creative. And of course, we have to remember that filmmakers, including documentary filmmakers, they are artists. They are taking a position. They, their job is to look at the science and understand what world vision they would like to present to their audience. Your job as scientists is to be able to communicate your vision the best way you can to inspire the creatives to tell the story the way that you see it in your vision. So we're both being driven, both communities are driven to tell the story the way they want to tell it. One by the research, the other by the art. So it's about a perfect combination that allows those two pieces to be compelling. Importance of impact, PR and press. I mean, it's no news to you that if you're getting in the local, regional and global press, as with your results, with your actions, with your investigations, it's the same with film. If the film is able to empower some of those elements in your research and science, then that becomes not just film news, like critiquing the way the film is made. It becomes local news, global news, regional news. The film has a life that goes way beyond the film industry. 
And none of this can happen without a greater community around a film. It actually creates different revenue. You know, often I've even worked with scientific institutions to distribute films, even just excerpts of films, as part of educational content, as part of perhaps curriculum, designing different inspirational activities around content that's independent, but that you have supported or endorsed as a scientist or as a, as, as a factual based researcher. You can create different revenue for the film business with the way your research provides insight and opportunities for sales and also the other way around. The film can actually promote your own research and work and elevate you and endorse you as a, as a, re, as a scientist. It can also have detrimental effects and you have to assess those risks, but that's, that is the power of the dynamic. You're also amplifying your audience. Often filmmakers make movies thinking, well, they've got a specific target audience, but by working with scientists and researchers, or experts, what they're getting is really an insight to a different type of audience they may not have otherwise even tapped into without that support. And finally, we're in a world where content is viral, thrown away, we watch it, we drop it. There are not many films these days that we sit there and go, that's a film we'll watch for the next 10 generations. And so what factual based support and a community around a film can do is create a legacy which otherwise isn't there. So we like to think of ourselves as innovators, perhaps not inventors, but certainly innovators. And we're not creating or redesigning, but often just reviewing, looking at impact in a different way when it comes to the film business. So again, I love my little icons. Looking at these, we are at Think Film Creative Strategists. Now, in research, if you're not looking your research from multiple different angles. That's socio-anthropological, scientific, factual, historical, all those things. If you're not doing that, you're not actually going to drive forward uh, a story in a comprehensive way. It's the, same, it's the same way with your research, it's the same way with films. So we're always looking at what's happening in the world, socio-politically, specifically at Think Film, to understand how a film can resonate globally. You know, often people say, oh, this is just a Norwegian film. This is just a German story, or this is just, you know, this is just a French story. Well, we're all humans. And as humans, despite our different languages and our different uh, identities and preferences, we have some basic fundamental commonalities, which mean that a lot of stories actually transcend those differences. And it's about being very creative and encouraging people to see beyond those differences to explore something that might actually get them to see commonalities. We like to see ourselves as positive disrupt disruptors. PR usually, press, takes a specific angle or, or message often. And if you have some really strong research and, and, and some strong storytelling, together you can create PR that is uh, going to perhaps create even a virality, a new message that an audience can consider. But without those two pieces working hand in hand, you alone as a scientist probably won't get that same virality and a filmmaker won't get that legitimacy. So it really is a combination. We're industry upskillers and the idea is that impact is not just something that is it's not a given in the film business actually i've been in the film business for seven years and as a social political scientist myself i have spent many years kind of breaking down how impact works in the film business and how it does not have to be seen as political campaigning that it can actually be for social justice or revelation or innovation you can find new ideas new theories in stories in film that you might not consider in a 20 page policy brief or an academic paper. We are policy actionists. We want to curate moments. And I think often, you know, maybe in science, you think, right, I'm going to do my peer review. I'm going to release uh, an article about my work. Well, in this day and age, if you're not doing it in multiple formats, from immersive to short 30 second videos about what you're doing, you're kind of missing massive audiences. I'm not trying to say that we need to pander, we need to oblige ourselves to moving innovation and technology, but at the same time to ignore it is to ignore a huge potential audience. And then, as I said, legacy makers, we're trying to get the film business to recognize that science and fact and impact plays a huge role in creating legacy. 
Now, I, I said to you, I've given you a lot of theory so far. You know, now it's about kind of really explaining some some examples. Some of you might know this film. This was a Hollywood blockbuster. Uh, it featured Mark Ruffalo, the Incredible Hulk. If some of you don't know him otherwise, he played, uh, this is a true story. He played the real life lawyer, Rob Bellot, who fought DuPont for 25 years against PFOA chemicals that were found in West Virginia in the water systems. Now, PFOA chemicals, for some of you who might not know, they are often referred to as forever chemicals, and they are carbon um, molecular structures that are very hard or difficult to break down. In fact, they're almost impossible to break down, and they actually factually sit in 99% of all humanity's blood system because of the amount of the way these chemicals have already been um inserted into our ecosystems in a way that we've consumed them. Now, when this film was released in the US, it didn't actually do really, really well theatrically. And then they came to us and we sat with a bunch of scientists and NGOs. And we said, they were like, we want to run a campaign around health because it causes, it's carcinogenous, causes cancer, you know? And we saw that COVID was looming in, 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 in Asia. And we were like, oh my God, if you run a film campaign where you say that there's a chemical everywhere all the time and people are going to get cancer when people are already anticipating COVID, good luck getting anyone to watch this in the cinema or buy it online. They're just going to feel that it's a scaremongering campaign. And so we worked really carefully with the team to create a campaign about forever chemicals no more. And eventually, with a very strong release of this film, we banned some of the PFOA chemicals in Europe in the legislation. And we could only do that by working with scientists. So we could only do that by working with scientists who essentially demonstrated which chemicals were the most lethal, how and which methods could be used in order to replace those chemicals with something that was safer. And also we work with economists, economists to show us that the bottom line in businesses would not be affected. Because at the end of the day, even if I as a human rights activist would like to just ban a chemical. We are dealing with so many elements in society that we have to consider all the different components to create compromise and success. Now we have more than, I think it's 85 multinationals who banned PFOA chemicals entirely from their supply chains, even when Europe only banned some of them. So just to give you an example, this is scientists and filmmakers and PR working together hand in hand to advance a very clear agenda to stop to reduce the number of cancer patients from this chemical, to stop this chemical from being used any further in society. This film is a legacy film. It is basically an Aaron Brockovich of our time, and people will continue to watch this because they feel that just by watching it, they're contributing to the legislation that's being changed. Every film is different, and this film is a documentary. That was a fiction. This is a documentary um, that was Oscar shortlisted, nominated, sorry. It's The Cave. It's about an incredible Syrian doctor who lived underground in Al Ghouta in West, uh, in West Syria. And she refused to leave and treated more than 50,000 patients, largely children, underground during the continued war and uh, crisis in, in, in Syria. And, you know, most people said to me, when I met the director, they said, right, we'd like to stop bombs in Syria. <laughs> And of course, as an impact producer, that's not something you can really achieve. But what we can do is work with researchers and experts on refugee policy to understand where the opportunity is to get greater funding into access to medicines in the camps for women and children. Here, this is really an example of, we managed to get this woman free. She was in a camp, she became free. We applied for asylum in Germany, they denied it. We then fought them and appealed it and we won. She's now a free doctor in the US. Impact producing can only happen in this case, we're working with lawyers, with refugee academic experts on refugee law. Nothing can be achieved with film alone unless we have solid backing of how to work with the systems and mechanisms in place globally to achieve these changes. Otherwise, what you are doing is simply running communications campaigns. And of course, as a scientist, you can decide what films you work on, are you just looking to let someone think about an idea? Or are you really looking to deliver an action? Um, the Territory, this is a recent film, uh, was Oscar shortlisted this year. 
And this is about um, an incredible tribe living in uh, the Uruguay Wild territory in Brazil. We started working on this film uh, whilst Bolsonaro was, was still in power and the elections were coming. And when we looked at this film, actually the community, the indigenous community met with us and said, you know, we're gonna do all the screenings. We're gonna go into all the screenings. We're gonna tell all the audience it is their fault because they're buying soy. And because they're buying soy, they're killing us and our community. And as a result, we, you know, deforestation is happening and you're also dying. And, you know, Think Film and the team kind of said, well, we, we think we really need to speak to a few scientists about like the deforestation file. Uh, we need to speak to a few policymakers because if you go in and tell audiences who have no choice about what they're consuming in their supermarkets because they have no power to do anything about it, that it is their fault, actually nobody's gonna come to the cinema. And actually nobody's gonna probably look at the facts and figures around deforestation at all because they're gonna feel blamed. Now it's, it's funny at a time where some of the greatest politicians that are listened to are autocrats, 72% of the world is autocratic. Emotional messaging around guilt and those kinds of things just deter people away from making a difference for others, factually. So when we looked and reviewed this uh, the, the, the deforestation file, we spoke with the indigenous community and we said, we can actually change the way this law is being drafted so that basically deforestation products are banned in Europe. And they said, no, well, you, you can act, we can actually work, we can advocate and change the, the way the law, well, luckily the law was still being drafted, it hadn't been voted on. And within seven months, we had made four amendments prioritizing the indigenous community. It then got completely banned and unanimous, unanimously agreed on by the council three months after that. So the film in its sense with the support of scientists and experts led to a more informed decision from the community in a territory that they didn't live in to have knock-on effects in their own home country. Well, this is a totally different film. You might know it. This is uh, Navalny. This was the Oscar winner this year. And, you know, working on this film is, is extremely different. You're working on issues of censorship, disinformation, democracy. What does democracy mean to people? Of course, running a campaign on a film like this can have many levels and working with lawyers to understand what possibilities there are to maintain someone's human rights whilst they're in prison, how to use that for press, how to then get perhaps a research paper together on all political prisoners and how and opposition leaders and the right to democracy and the right to choose someone. This no longer became a film about one man and his fight for his people. It, it represented political prisoners globally in the campaign that we ran. And this was again in consultation with experts. For us, films and science and research are not separate. They are fundamentally linked and one empowers the other. And the success of those results can only happen when they're symbiotically working together. If one sits against the other, then the campaign will fail. The only thing that can be successful is if a campaign is showing many different schools of thought in a new area of uh, medical treatment. Perhaps I, we're now working on a film at Think Film around, um, what do you call it, um, parasites. It's fascinating. And that, that kind of journey we're taking with the creatives to kind of almost humanize parasites in a way that they're not seen as just completely evil entities can only be done with scientists who can break that down for us as creatives. This is a film actually that was about, uh, as a fiction with uh, Hugh Jackman, you can see there, again, another previous superhero Wolverine, but there's a very sad story about, a true story about a young man who tried, to, who, who basically takes his life and it's about male suicide and, and the, the high numbers suffered uh, amongst young male populations globally when it comes to mental health and suicide. And again, Think Film worked with the World Health Organization to essentially make sure that this film was, it was more of an awareness campaign, but couldn't have been done if we hadn't worked with scientists based on the facts, figures, the lack of data, what data is needed, how to move forward. None of these campaigns would work. And we elevated all the scientists took part in panels connected to the screenings. They, became, they were part of social media campaigns. 
we elevated the scientists as much as the science elevated our campaign. And finally, this is uh, for, for those of you who might not know, on the left, there are two incredibly powerful women. One is Nadia Murad, who won the Nobel Peace Prize. We worked with her on a film about the Yazidi genocide. And then we have an upcoming film about a Nepalese woman who's been working on conflict related sexual violence. The film isn't even finished. We managed to get uh, Devi into a huge conference with scientists and policymakers in London. That part of the film has been filmed, that part of that impact campaign, working with those scientists and brainstorming how she could rework Nepalese law to basically give restitution to all the women victims. And now that's actually part of the film. So often science and research can be can become new elements that are within film stories. And yeah, something that I that I think is a really interesting thing to show you in terms of how science and experts work together for success in terms of audience engagement. Now, I'm not a scientist in terms of data metrics. And this is extremely banal, but it is just a Google Analytics sheet of one of the films we worked on, which was about a skateboarder who was a kind of reformed drug addict and, you know, in Sweden and really come out of his ways and kind of trying to share with young people how he got himself into a, a deep vacuum of uh, suffering as a result of, of a kind of crazy, extreme radical career in, in, in skateboarding. And as you can see, there are lots of different moments where this film you know, had peaks in terms of audience engagement. And this is globally, right? So this is not just, this film is a Swedish film, but it, it had an international audience. And its most successful moment, you can see its highest peak actually, is when Think Film ran an event with the World Health Organization in Brussels. And that event with all the social media, all the experts that came to speak, all the other celebrities that endorsed the content, all the academics, all the community, that raised awareness for the film and of the research that was connected to the film, which was around mental health, ment um, and, and uh, what do you call it? It was around um, making sure that there were alternative therapies available to medicated, uh, medicated treatments for, for psychosis and all these other issues. It just shows you that the data proves that when scientists, experts and filmmakers work together, there's just more interest in the story overall Finally, or a few last words, if as a scientist and a filmmaker, filmmaker, a storyteller, you're not looking at what really the market is or what impact means to a market, then you can't really understand how to communicate what you're delivering in terms of, of your research. You know, today, millennials and Gen Z, as you can see, have a combined spending power of 150 billion US dollars. That's a powerful generation of young people. Those young people expect businesses. And in this case, the film industry is still a business. So if you're working with filmmakers, they are, it, it is a, an, a marketable area. They're expecting their needs to be addressed. And what are their needs? Their needs are legitimacy, authenticity. They don't want to be spoon fed content that they feel is in some way misinforming them. They want to see content and products that are giving back in some way authentically to basic fundamental values in their communities. And obviously with science and, and, and with impact, you just lower the spend because authenticity breeds interest and interest breeds purchasing and, it, and, and more markets. So what you end up doing is just spending way less money on, on, on marketing. And so the, the market is there for what we're doing. Impact is demanded. And I kind of already touched on some of these things. In content online and film, your largest audience are the millennials and Jed said. That's not saying they don't influence older generations, as I say in one of my next points, but if you're looking at your research and who you're trying to influence, you also have to think about who is your audience and is this an audience you're actually tapping into? Maybe you will find your Gen Z millennial audience with your research through film, because that is where those audiences are. As I said, they want trust, legitimacy, authenticity. They're demanding it. 
And actually, there is a greater interest in docs, even though we don't see as many documentaries being made at the moment because of commercial, uh, lack of commercial interest from the business. But there is, you know, younger, uh, the younger generations are watching content in alternative, uh, on alternative platforms. And they want to watch, they want to feel like they're getting it from an authentic source, not from a large uh, kind of streaming source. They try and find it from more kind of, let's say, boutique uh, outlets. Um, as I said, millennials are influencing their, the older generations in a way, what they're watching, what to think, how to believe. And truth, value, and individual expression. The final piece is if your science or if your story doesn't allow an audience to interact with the content in some way, take an action, question their thoughts, find a community to connect with based on their doubts, then you've stopped. You've lost your audience at that point. What happens is, is they feel they feel they can no longer explore that question they have in their mind. Of course, interactive, immersive experiences help that. But even two-dimensional classic film content have, can have power to do that. It's just about the ecosystem around it. Most people think that impact is just charity and that by putting in, you know, working with researchers and all, all these components is just something that is kind of an extra burden in the, in the business. But actually, we've proven with our campaigns at Think Film that we actually make the film business money. So therefore, there's a value in paying impact producers and researchers to be part of your teams. We've increased box office sales. We've ha certainly had better press or more press than if they hadn't worked with an impact producer. We've also had direct investment from public broadcasters, including Arte, including, um, we've had Film Fund CNC, Swedish Film Funds. Like we've had public funding entities give money directly into impact specific campaigns. We've expanded territories, so countries, languages, audience, potential of a film, and, and we've, sell, we've sold beyond the film industry. So impact and research and science connected to a film can make money. This part is obviously very connected to the film business, but the part where scientists come in is really impact production. It's the second one. A director has to believe in the change. They work with an impact production team to make that real. An impact producer has to work with experts. Think film, you know, we're social political science scientists. We are cert we're strategists, consultants. There is no way we could design roadmaps on effective change or improvements or amendments on policy or even investment in new scientific um, funds for, for cures or whatever it might be if we're not working with the experts to understand that and to unpack it. Ultimately, you need money. We all deserve to be paid for the work we're doing and the contribution we're giving. Film funds need to finance it and distributors should understand that they can collaborate better with experts uh, in order to deliver the correct legitimate messaging around film. So that's it for me. It's a little bit of a kind of hurricane visit into impact production, but I hope it was interesting. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us.